Hi everyone and welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Biscalonis, founder and CEO of Reset Brain and Body, an integrative mental health care practice. So I wanted to talk to you today about our somewhat negative coping mechanisms that we can fall into. And this happens all the time and this happens when we really start to build up our stress, our pressure, our tension when we are operating in a place where we need to relieve the pressure. And so if you are finding, and we've talked about this before, that you are that glass of water and you're waking up first thing in the morning and your water level is all the way to here and there's so little room for whatever else is gonna come at you that day, well then how can you expect yourself to then have the awareness and the capacity to say, okay, what I need for myself today is a long walk in the woods where I listen to a meditation and I feel my feet touch the ground and I smell the earth and I will be centered. And that is how I will recharge today. That is how I will know that I will cope with all of this pressure. No, when our water is up to here, <laughs> we have this much room to not only handle what else is gonna happen that day, but then also to figure out how we're going to respond, right? And so in the moment, give yourself some validation, some permission to say, you know what, all I have capacity to do right now in this moment of quiet, or in this moment where I'm finally getting a break, is to scroll on my phone, or to dance or listen to a song, or to watch just mindless, horrible TV, that's okay. The key here is that we actually have to strip down everything that's making our water level get to here on a continuous basis so that we have the capacity to choose more mindful responses. I cannot talk to you about being more mindful if your life is not built for you to even have opportunities to pause, to have the capacity to be more mindful. Does that make sense? So mindfulness is about building habits and we have to build habits out of slowing down and doing less. And I know a lot of you are gonna say, screw you, <laughs> right? Like, how dare you? My life is too busy. Stop telling me to do less. Stop telling me to slow down. This is so busy. There's so many things going on. I have people yelling at me all the time. I totally get it. So then once again, it's how can I consciously set boundaries? How can I consciously check in with my energy? How can I consciously say no or say yes to things that do or do not give me joy so that I have more capacity? so that when I have that opportunity to finally have a break, have some time to myself, I feel empowered and I also feel like I have enough in me to do the things that really bring me joy. Do the things like go on a walk or cook a meal listening to music or read a book for pleasure or do whatever it else, have a conversation with your spouse or play with your child. Okay, so looking at your lifestyle, looking what's happening in your life and recognizing where is your energy being taken away kind of without you having a say in it, but you are doing it by choice, right? Where are you hemorrhaging energy because of shoulds or comparison or rushing or more obligations where you can say, you know what, actually I can back off. I can, I can, I can choose not to engage in that. I can choose to say no to that. So often being mindful is about recognizing when we can lead through our intuition and our strong sense of self instead of acting out of misalignment, instead of acting out of the shoulds and the pressure and the comparison and these parts of us that are overcompensating for shame or guilt or insecurities. When you operate as a more intuitive, authentic self, you might find that you might be just as busy, but the things you're engaging in are actually bringing you joy. The things you're engaging in allow you to be present 
the activities you're taking kids to feel really authentic because you recognize that they're out of a place of joy for both them and you. And you're not worried about how they're performing. You're not worried about how they're comparing to someone else. And you're not worried about, you know, them getting the best grade on whatever it is. So I'm going to repeat that again. When we operate out of an intuitive, mindful, authentic place, we might find that our life, the activities we're showing up for, allows us to be more present, engaged, and joyful. But when we are operating out of misalignment, making decisions, engaging in behaviors, interacting with people or activities out of shame, guilt, shoulds, comparison, insecurities, we will find that that is when we feel the pressure is too much. And then that is when we will engage in those negative, unhelpful coping mechanisms. That is when we need to escape because we are so already inauthentically misaligned that of course we're gonna need to numb because it's just too much. We've already been pushing ourselves so far in one direction that feels so inauthentic, already feels incongruent that of course we're gonna match that with kind of some more shameful, guilt-ridden activity. We're gonna then beat ourselves up over that because we're like, what am I doing? I know I feel stuck. I know this doesn't feel right, but I can't seem to shake it. We get stuck in this cycle. So again, coming at our life with a perspective, with a perspective of being centered true to ourself, understanding our values, understanding our priorities from a values place allows us to just naturally be more mindful so that we do get those breaks and we do get time to ourselves. We're mindfully choosing the things that already fill us up or we're already engaged in things that don't need us to respond with such a strong coping mechanism. Or are we able to respond more quickly in the present, in that moment? Oh, whoa, whoa, I'm noticing myself reacting. Whew, I can have more awareness in this moment. Okay, I'm recognizing there's a comment. I just want to tune in real quick. Okay, cool. All right, you guys. So mindfulness tools are simply being able to pay attention to the present moment without judgment. That's an ongoing practice. Whatever you do to allow yourself to do that on a day in day out, day out basis is kind of like picking what shade of color you're gonna wear that day, right? There's so many different ways you can approach it, but it, what matters is that you're doing it consistently. You're consistently catching yourself in judgment thoughts. You're consistently catching yourself shooting on yourself, comparing yourself, thinking too far about the future or the past, not staying in that present moment without judgment. So things like deep breathing, things like um, brain teasers, Right? Things like looking at all the colors in the room. There's so many different activities. I'm happy to share more of them with you, but it's about what is it that you can find that allows you to do that day in, day out. But more than that, more importantly than that, is assessing your entire life. Are you in alignment? Are you not? Are you able to even be present and joyful in the life that you've created for yourself? Or are you already so misaligned that there's no way you can be mindful? because it's so incongruent from who you really are or who you want to be. I wish it was simple. But hey, this is mental health care. This is not quick fix coaching tips. <laughs> this is deep emotional stuff, all right? So we have to take a deep dive sometimes. We have to really take that holistic view. I have a feeling that's why you're showing up week after week to get tips and tools. Maybe it's deeper than that. So if you're looking to dig in, please reach out to a professional, reach out to someone you trust, read some books, contact us, you can DM me directly. I'll send you all of my favorite resources to get started. Reach out to one of us to help you. 
we're here to help guide you on that process. And if you need to tear things down because you're looking and you're like, oof, none of this is in alignment. I am so stuck. I'm so misaligned. We will help. All right, take care.